Only one explode the rest. Okay, I'll be honest, I haven't yet decided on this one. I think that in the new version, the office could use a bit of decoration, like balloons. But I'm undecided on Get Well Someday and Happy 12th Birthday. Which would you go with? What would you go with? Right. You know, sometimes when you solicit another person's opinion, it makes you realize that you knew which one you actually really wanted all along. Get well someday it is. There are two S everywhere, and there's a two in twelve. Pick right. Uh, sorry about that. Dog was making some noise. Double check, they weren't getting into something. He said pick right. I saw pick right. Oh. Oh, sorry, buddy. Wait. No. Figures. Or actually, maybe I should have gone with... No. No, I've made my decision. We're moving on. Are you sure? Come now. You've already made your choice. It's true that you chose badly, but we all have to move on from our mistakes. You're the one that chose not to go with what we chose. <sighs> now here's something special. You remember that broken test trophy that got left in the game on accident? Well, I'm developing a technology to simply give you the trophy. Yes, you see, you'll come to this lever and when you pull it, the trophy will be given to you. It's as simple as that. All right, I like trophies. As you can see, the machine is not working yet since... Wait, what in the holy hell is going on? You got the trophy? Why did the machine work? Stanley, I didn't fix it. I didn't do anything to it. I swear, it was broken just a second ago. Who fixed it? Is someone here? Are we being... Oh, God. <sighs> Composure, composure. Yes, as you can see, the machine is working as normal as I intended. It, um, it truly speaks to the awe-inspiring magic of the Stanley Parable 2. Breathe, just breathe. What else? What other exhibits haven't we seen yet? Oh, what's this? You know what? Let's bring the jump circle back for Stanley Parable 2 as well. It's a... Oh, wait. You already spent all your jumps the first time we saw the jump circle. Hmm. Oh, well. I suppose it can just be a nice decorative piece, then. What? I don't remember jumping. The button that says the name of the player who's playing the game. <clears throat> the baby's all grown. An epilogue would be fun, wouldn't it, Stanley? Yes, yes, it will go at the end of the. Um, uh, well, we'll figure that out later. Settings World Champion? Ah, I can see you've gotten the Settings World Champion trophy. Well done. You've experienced every setting, traveled to all corners of the settings menu, 
There's nothing you haven't seen. So just for you, in the Stanley Parable 2, I'm including an entirely new setting. Something called Bumpscosity. What exactly is Bumpscosity? Well, I haven't quite figured that part out yet, but I know that you'll be able to adjust it on some sort of slider and that it'll be accessible from the settings menu. We'll sort out the rest of the details later. I hope you're looking forward to trying out every level of Bumpscosity in the Stanley Parable 2. Bumpscosity? <clears throat> what is bump scarcity? Um, infinite hole? Are you finding this interesting at all? Go for it. Okay. I am. Opening rim, surrounding area, depth, hole, entrance, infinity. Hole, hole, more hole. All right, I'm not going to beat around I the bush. I get the feeling you should be reading more of the signs and pics, though. As f as far as I can tell, I, you you do you think the signs are actually going to make a difference though? Like it won't let me zoom in, so I feel like it's purposely made so that you can't really read much of them. Like like, what can we learn from that? We've got a hole at the top, which leads down to depth. It has more hole. <laughs> <laughs> that it's got unknown, some unknown something. Some of them, maybe. I mean, this is for educu educational use. You're not wrong. <laughs> hole entrance infinity. Oh. The holy moly. <laughs> How deep there can we dig? There were some pics you missed earlier that had more numbers on desks on them. The answer is the answer will mildly surprise you. All right, well, we'll, 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 I'm sure we'll do another loop. So, whenever we get there. Stanley, here's an idea that I'm truly fond of. It's never been done before in a video game. This is in fact a hole that you can fall down forever. That's right. These picks mean you may be in a black hole. Until the end of time, if you like. A stunning leap forward for video games as a medium. Hmm. Do we enter the infinity hole? Go for it. That's a pretty deep hole. Who knows? Here we go. You see, isn't it wonderful? One of my more ingenious concoctions, if I do say so. Now then, since you've gotten to see the infinite hole, you can press the teleport button to pop back up to the top, and we can continue onward. Hmm. The whole... Now, I don't mean to be a bummer, but I do recommend you use the teleport button to go back to the, the top. The sound's still changing and the hole still gets smaller. rather than later spectrum of things. Uh, uh. Press it. I don't know quite how to say this tactfully, but it's possible that I slightly exaggerated the infinite nature of the hole. What? Is it a very, very deep hole? To be certain it is. It's and an extremely deep hole. That means it's not infinite. I don't infinite. want anyone to say that it isn't an astonishingly deep hole. It is. Is it infinite? Well, that sort of depends on your definition of infinity. 
From one perspective, I think we're hitting the, the bottom. infinite is merely philosophical in nature. It's more of a... Okay, well, good for you. You found the bottom of the hole. You found me out, Stanley. I'm a liar and a cheat, and you're so clever. Look, I think the issue here is just that you're unusually fascinated by falling. What normal person actually wants to fall infinitely? I figured the hole was as deep as anyone would actually need. Don't you put this on me. Maybe you're the problem. You said infinite. <sighs> Look, uh, things got a little heated there. I think we both said some things we didn't mean. Why don't we just put all this behind us and agree to just call the hole mostly infinite? If that works for you, then go ahead and press the teleport button to warp up to the top of the hole. He lies. I'll just be up here when you're ready. Well, I guess we should go up. But that definitely wasn't infinite. He lied. Great. Now, I'm very excited to show you even more of my ideas for the sequel. But dude, like, that wasn't even an infinite hole, like... Oh, for heaven. You see, I was right. The problem is you. The problem is that you like holes too much. Who Not doesn't? Normal. A normal person would have said, yep, that's an infinite hole right there. Goes on forever till the end of time. No. Don't need to see it all. But not you. Oh, no, 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 no. You have a weird sort of... Oh. Did the hole seem even shorter to you this time? I couldn't help but feel like you spent a little less time in there than you did before. I mean, admittedly, I didn't make an infinite hole, but I didn't think it was that not infinite. Well, I suppose once again there's nothing to do here. If you decide you've had enough of the hole, you can hit the teleport button and come join me up above. Um, maybe I missed something. We got cigarette butts. Our friend was a smoker, whoever was down here. They had a new mug. Um, there was a meeting at 2 p.m. Meeting at 2 p.m. Uh, all right. Had enough? I'm positively thrilled. I really do have so much more to show you and to talk about. And I've had enough of the hole for a lifetime. Have you, though? I mean... It's fascinating. The sounds, they're so indoors. Gosh, how could I have guessed? You're back in the hole. If this starts to become a thing we're... Wow, okay, yes. I'm starting to become extremely certain that the no. hole is not only not infinite, but that it's growing steadily less and less infinite. I suspect that I'm starting to hit the point where it's no longer feasible to call the hole infinitely deep, even by the lax overall standards for accountability and marketing. What's going on here? Stanley, I have no explanation for the uncertain nature of the hole's length. Here, let's try something. Let's pop back up to the top, and we'll see if it gets any shorter. <laughs> well, there it is. The shame if you of keep falling, maybe the floor will end up even with the top and something else will show up. It's more of a concavity, or even a very aggressive divot. It is basically a glorified crack now. <clears throat> it kind of sucks. Although, it is a mighty fine looking divot. How is this still appealing to you? I know you're obsessed with holes, but at this depth, I just can't see this scratching the itch. Oh, who am I to judge? You just do whatever it is you're here to do and hit the teleport button when you're ready to move on. All right. Uh, I feel like we're not getting any more rouses out of them. Let's let's move on. Oh. Hmm. Is the um teleport button not working? You sure? Well, I mean. I really don't have an explanation. It was working just... Can you pick any of those items up? Doesn't seem like it. I'm gonna try the button again. Still nothing? Well, I suppose... I, I suppose there is one thing I can do to fix this. Perfect. I'm out. 
Goodbye, Stanley. What? You couldn't bear to be away from the hole, and now you'll get more time with it than you could ever have asked for. It's a win for everyone. You get to be with the hole, I get to do literally anything else. Take care, Stanley. I hope you and the hole have a wonderful rest of eternity together. Yeah, shit. I have a bad feeling that we're going to be here for a little bit, so I'm going to go smoke a bowl quick, and hopefully we'll be finished with the hole. Okay. I do have the TV playing the, oh, uh, the hole's moving. Okay. I don't know if you can hear me or if I'm cutting out. I'm probably cutting out, but I can see the TV and we are sinking deep. Going into the abyss, boys. What a lovely perspective. Oh, we can change our perception now. Fuck. Damn it. Oh. Alright. Now we're having a party. It's all about perception, baby. Yeah. Okay. Where's the light, dude? Hiding in my house again. Follow the light. Nightmare fuel. You're awake. It seems you had sort of dozed off there, drifting away into dreamland. But we can't have that, Stanley, because this hole is just so darn fascinating that I want you to be wide awake for every second of it. You don't want to miss a no. single moment. So how about if I just pop in from time to time and wake you up to keep you really, truly focused on the hole? From no. the looks of things, you and I will have many, many years here in this hole. No. And I'm looking forward to all of them. No, no. Stay you... alert, Stanley. Give me... I'll be back. Give me the teleport <laughs> button. Oh, God. No. no. Oh, okay. I was going to say we can't go for more. Here we are. Go on, try out some of the new features. I think that's everything. 
This game could trigger PTSD in some, heh. All right, have you seen everything you wanted to? Ready to move on now? This game used to trigger PTSD, like, like, I played it before it was the Ultra Deluxe so Edition. Stanley, what do you think? Do you like all of the new features? Yes, I know it's not exactly clear yet how exactly these features will come together as one single coherent video game, but I can feel it in my soul. It's going to work. There's definitely a good game in there somewhere. Say, let's do an experiment. I'll arrange these new features together, and we'll see whether or not it coheres. You've played it before. Gameplay experience. The old version, <laughs> like, on the okay. PC. Are you ready? Here it is. I give you the Stanley Parable 2. It was pretty basic then. Um, well, um, I mean, there's potential here, right? It's sort of... Okay, never mind. Hold on, let me do a different arrangement. Okay, yes, yes, this is much better. I feel good about this. Here we go, version two. It was a lot of years ago, too, but... <sighs> Who am I kidding, Stanley? This isn't a coherent video game at all. It's a lot of gags. And I do very much enjoy creating gags, but they don't add up to anything. I wanted more than anything to create a sequel that would capture all the magic of the first game. I wanted fans to love it. No matter how good these gags are, they won't stand on their own. They would need the structure and the gameplay of the original. Wait, maybe that's it. I can take the original Stanley Parable and simply, well, insert a few of my new features into it. Tastefully, of course with respect, with care for the vision and integrity of the original game. Would it possibly work? Mm, I suppose it could, but it would need a really, really tremendous title screen. A title screen that says with bold and uncompromising conviction, this is the Stanley Parable 2. Let me see if I can whip something up. <laughs> All right, perfect. Go ahead, take a look. Okay, so the DLC makes it a loop. Brings you right back to the beginning. <clears throat> you want to check out that epilogue? And there's credits. I guess I've never checked out credits. This would be the sure. kind of game where they might actually have something interesting in the credits. Check that after. The end is never the I'm end. I'm a bit confused, though. What do you mean? I mean, about the overall story? Um, I can give you a brief synopsis of the endings that I got back Why in the day. bring you back to beginning? Um, I think the impression was that he was just going to put us back into the same game and just do a couple subtle changes. Because he said, isn't that what he just kind of said there at the end? He was like, fucking number two, we'll just do it the same with subtle changes. It's kind of beautiful. We must have uh, got away from the office eventually. Not sure. Oh boy. There seemed to be more to explore at the office. If it's anything like the original version, we should eventually loop back around. Like, the original version I played was like, you get the left to right, 
you can go into that crane room where I jumped off. So that, but I haven't jumped off before, but I've gone through. Um, I can't remember where that goes past that point, but I remember the main path where you go left, you go through, you go to that meeting room, I think. Once you're out of the meeting room, Ah, fuck, I can't even remember. It's it's like a blank. All I know is at the end you end up at a... Oh, wait. But we chose death. Yeah, we ended up at the same spot. The mind control facility. And then... Oh, man. Wait. What was this about? The Stanley Parable 2. In loving memory. I don't fucking know. I must say, I found the bucket to be quite comforting and a welcome reprieve from... <laughs> oh, that's funny. Holy shit. Oh. Jim. 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 Rongo, it's Brad. Stanley Parable developers and Wars Men lost no more sequels. When the Stanley Parable launched to massive success in 2013, its creators made plans to build the property into an entire franchise, but disastrous cri critical and commercial reception to the Stanley Parable 2 prompted developers to rethink their ambitions as outlined in a press release they published today. It's clear that more Stanley Parable is just not what the fans want reads the press release. We thought that we had a vision of the series that players would be excited about, yet it turns out this could not have been farther from the truth. The press release goes on to promise to preserve the artistic integrity of the original game and to stop assaulting fans with our reckless and insulted, insulting creative visions. The word sorry appears more than 25 times in the press release. Brutal. Brutal. Will you get it right? It's Brad. Jim. No. Jim. No. Oh. We're back in the office. Hello. Okay. Um. What do you think? Yes. Yes. Thank you. 
Oh fuck, that trips me right the fuck out thinking about Alan Wake. Oh, it just spirals forever. I guess, Alan. I guess. What's that? Oh, that's trippy. <sighs> Should I put in the actual time? Go for it. Okay, so it was actually legit credits. There, anyway, let's fire this up. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul-rending, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened. This complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. Okay, well, let's get back to it. So... All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. I think I'm going to bring you through the main storyline. We won't fuck around. I want to get you to have the general basis. Because there, there's the canon storyline, even though there's a thousand different things. I'll... I'll, I'll We'll just do that quick, but for what well, first no things first. How hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co workers. Okay. I want I want to see if that that thing that code is on the computer. We will we'll ignore the bucket. 
Okay, so this computer doesn't have it this time. Stanley went around touching every little thing in the office, but it didn't make a single difference, nor did it advance the story in any way. Shit. Oh well. We'll do the cannon. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. And we've already done this room, so I won't linger in here Yet too long. Yet there was not a single person here There's a either. lot to read. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. I'll leave this here for a second so you can read it. Get back to it here. We've been we've been in there. We've had our fun with the broom closet. Oh, I'll give you a choice. Want to continue with the canon story, or do you want to check out the basement? Basement's fun. It's a good time. Totally up to you, though. We can do whatever choice you'd down. like. We're going down. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Ooh, what do we found down here? Oh my god, I can't read that. Oh, thank god I have an 82 inch TV. I think this is fine. There's a drawing of a bear on a motorcycle. Yeah, I can't fucking read it. I'm gonna take a screenshot though, see if I can decipher her down. I'm gonna probably find myself on the fucking Stanley Parable Reddit. But okay. Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss, admitting he had left his post during work hours. He might be fired for that. That's and in true. such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished. His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all? None of it made any logical sense. And as Stanley pondered this, he That's began to strange. make other strange observations. Oh. For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? Oh. Why did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Were they simply repeating? No, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange, this can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. I'm dreaming, he yelled. This is all a dream. Oh, what a relief, Stanley felt, to have finally found an answer, an explanation. His co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. And he thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real-life job pushing buttons. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. So, he imagined himself flying and began to gently float above the ground. 
Then he imagined himself soaring through space on a magical star field, and it too appeared. It was so much fun, and Stanley marveled that he had still not woken up. How was he remaining so lucid? And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Why is there a voice in my head dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? Now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly strange. I'm dreaming about a voice describing me, thinking about how it's describing my thoughts, he thought. And while he thought it all very odd and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams, the truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself, believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? Stanley oh, is as room. awake right now as he's ever been in his life. Now, How could the, the car ever end up here? It was quite a shock to Stanley. After all, he knew for certain, beyond a doubt, that this was in fact a dream. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself too. Surely, surely, if he could just... He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control. That this was a dream. So he closed his eyes gently. And he invited himself... Just seems like a loop. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin. The press of the mattress on his back. The fresh air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please, it's all I want. I want my apartment and my wife and my job. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. Everything will be fine. I am okay. Fuck. Stanley began screaming. Please, someone, someone wake, wake me up. up. My, name My name is Stanley. Stanley. I, have I have a boss. I have an office. office. I, am I am real. real. Please, Please just tell me, tell me I'm real. real. I must be real. I must, must be. Can anyone, can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? And everything went black. This is the story of a woman named Mariella. Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her place of work. But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. And although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. He was obviously crazy, this much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. And in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am sane. I am in control of my mind. I know what is real and what isn't. It was comforting to think this, and in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. But then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day, the very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career, and by extension, the rest of her life. She had no time for this. So it was only a moment that she stood there, staring down at the body. And then she turned and ran. <laughs> Fucked. How do you like that ending? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room to check on his co-workers. He never functioned well by himself Lol. and constantly needed support and guidance from others. So the thought Yikes. of total solitude was terrifying to him. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. Pretty brutal, eh? Hmm. 
I wonder if I fucked up by not interacting with every... No, I interacted with every computer last time. Okay. Um, I'm going to look for the computer. If there's nothing there, we're going to speed run the cannon. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Gotta take a poo. I got the feeling money's for stealing, but not yours, of course. Say, that's a lady purse, or a lovely purse. Nice attempt. You can't read. Brad is illiterate, just kidding. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. What could it mean? Stanley Stanley was in such a rush to get through the story as quickly as possible, he didn't even have a single minute to just let the narrator talk. That kind of anxiety isn't healthy, so he relaxed for a few moments with some calming New Age music. Jesus fucking Christ, are you kidding me? You fucking douchebag. Feeling soothed and rejuvenated, Stanley calmly walked forward into the opened passageway. I should have known better. Like, hello. You think you were gonna speed run this? Yeah. Darn narrator. Okay, so. I think we're getting close to where we were. <sighs> Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. I'm assuming you'd like to go through the Mind Control Facility this time. Oh, huh. I'll give you an option. So, the main story... Yeah, I'll show you the main story beat here, and then I'll tell you the option. It's a funny yes. option. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? Hey, buddy, Stanley Parable today. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, I felt like playing the Stanley Parable. I played her back in the day there, and uh, I think I think when me and my buddy were really stoned, we must have played through it because it seems like we've made a little bit of progress. The narrator seems to remember stuff, but uh, yeah, bud, what's up tonight? Oh, hold up one sec though, for that reply, or actually, send your reply before. I'm gonna explain my thing when your till your comment comes in. So I'm gonna show you the next story beat. In game here but there's a easter egg because people found out you could clip over and then fall down there and then the game would be glitched out because you'd be down there but since they realized you could do it they put an easter egg down there so we'll check that out later Trento fuck I'm walking forward I don't know how bad the lag is I'll pause it if it really doesn't line up well now the monitors jump to life, their true nature revealed. Each bore the number of an empty okay. in the building. Stanley's co-workers. Got the next the two days of off, so I just ate like 1,000 milligrams of gummies. Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> That'd do the trick. Is that, that, that's the beard you're rocking, eh? Fuck. Was reduced to images on a screen, and Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. Okay, so just in case you didn't catch that, oh, we can't go back there anyway, so we're going forward. 
so these monitor people. Ooh, so 234 is. I'm going to the moon, baby, and fuck yeah, a big beard gang. <laughs> I wish. Uh, we're an employee 427, so there's our camera. That's accurate. Um, what was the one you, the number you were saying? Reminds the... me of Matrix Room. Yeah, yeah, that with the fucking, uh, who the fuck is that guy? Ah, oh, I can't even remember his name. Oh, so... 427. Okay, so... oh, that's us. Yeah, we were... Four... I think that's us right there. Well, I'm fucking pointing in my room. How stoned am I? Yeah, that's us. I wish I could zoom in. That's accurate. That's our room. This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe. It couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? No. He refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never. It was unthinkable, wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? But here was the proof, the heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions, happy or sad or content. Walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he would dismantle the controls once and for all. So. Um... Choices, choices, my friend. It's coming down to you. What will you decide? What will you decide on a And when at last he found the source of the room's power, he knew it was his duty, his obligation, to put an end to this horrible place and to everything it stood for. What you thinking, fella? Left. You want to turn it off. You got it. Can do. Oh. That went dark quick. Blackness. And a rising chill of uncertainty. Was it over? Yes. He had won. He no had way. defeated the machine. Unshackled himself from someone else's command. <laughs> Freedom was I'm mere so moments away. And yet, even as the immense door slowly opened, Stanley reflected on how many puzzles still lay unsolved. Where had his co-workers gone? How had he been freed from the machine's grasp? What other mysteries did this strange building hold? But as sunlight streamed into the chamber, he realized none of this mattered to him. For it was not knowledge or even power that he had been seeking, but happiness. Perhaps his goal had not been to understand, but to let go. No longer would anyone tell him where to go, what to do, or how to feel. Whatever life he lives, it will be his. And that was all he needed to know. It was, perhaps, 
the only thing worth knowing. Stanley stepped through the open door. Stanley felt the cool breeze upon his skin, the feeling of liberation, the immense possibility of the new path before him. This was exactly the way, right now, that things were meant to happen. And Stanley was happy. All right. Well, Dear what, me, would where you did like... all the bump scarcity go? Quite unnerving in here with all of it gone. That's fucking crazy. He's noticing the bump scarcity meter that I turned on. We'll keep it off then, because we're getting we're getting a rouse out of him. What did I do fucking wrong? I probably didn't do anything wrong. There probably is no right answer. Like, they, it's probably just done this way to put... Uh, I thought I was making progress. Before I... not turn it all the way up? We can. You can go to level one. This game is just very random. Go to level 12, 50, 76, 100, or 1,000. I think 1,000 is a little much. We should probably go with 1,000. Like, okay, 1,000. Did that? Did it save? Yeah. Huh. So, my friend when Stanley left came right. to a set of two open doors. He entered the door on his left. What would you like to do this time? Do 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 do. You pick this time. Okay, well, I've got something in mind that I want to this try. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. No, I want to go right through the it. The lounge was sublime, a work of art. What was it about this room that called so deeply and so personally to Stanley? Its grace... Its subtle charm. No. Stanley knew it was something deeper. Something darker. I'll do whatever I have to for a raise. Just please don't let anyone see. Blop, blop. No, just kidding. Well, yes. Really, really worth it being here in the room. A room so utterly... The game is pixelating for some reason on laptop and phone. ...have mysteriously vanished. Here you sit looking at these chairs and some paintings. Really worth it. Um, let me. <laughs> I was say is... At this point, Stanley's obsession with this room bordered on creepy and reflected poorly on his overall personality. It's possible that this is why everyone left. Jesus. 